feminist pretends to be a man, then ends it all. When are these ladies gonna understand shit is not sweet for men? Nora Vincent, the author of Self Made Man, has died by assisted suicide. Nora was a radical feminist who believed men lived on easy mode and tried to prove it by disguising herself as a man for two years. What? And sadly, in that time, she learned that no, it's not easy being a man. Instead, what she found out is men actually have it harder and wrote a book about her experience. In fact, the experience was so bad, she had to stop at 18 months. She didn't even make it the full two years. Damn. Damn. Because she was starting to hate women due to how bad all of them treated her when they believed she was a man. Due, due to how bad all of them treated her when they believed she was a man. I mean, wow, she went deep. She was only dating. She was only dating as a woman. A feminist woman disguised as a man. And it got to a point where she almost hated women. Oh my god, that's weird. And was left with psychological scars that Damn. accompanied her for all her life. From only two years experience being a man. <laughs> 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 it's not funny. It's not funny. Ah, you bitch! It's, this is not funny. I'm not laughing at anything that happened to this woman. I'm not laughing at her story and the trauma it caused on her life that made her end up on aliving herself. No, I'm not laughing at that at all. It's the fact of men live their entire lives as males, basically, then they grow up to be men. But just for two years, just for two years, it traumatized her for the rest of her life. Interesting. These men keep telling y'all it ain't easy for us. Same shit, different sauce. Like I'm barely hanging in there myself. I'm bare. I'm six two, and I'm barely like God damn. Ah, you bitch. And the thing is, we don't have to do the part where you cross the room, and you go up to a stranger and say the first words. And those first words are so hard to say without sounding like a cheese ball. El garbage, the ink. She's talking about. She's talking about approach. You know, walking up to a woman and obviously, you know, shooting your shot as a man. How simple women make it. It traumatized her. It traumatized this woman. Wow. Sometimes I do wonder if, because I am a man, like I understand it, therefore it's like we're used to it so much that it's like it's, yeah, it's just part of being a man. But damn, wow. Or react to reviews we're reacting to things on the internet same day same shirt different video and today we're reacting to this video uh, i'll put the name of the youtuber right here who edited this video that we were reacting to um the woman who pretended to be a man or the feminist who pretended to be a man she was actually set out to prove that men had it easier than women and that there was this toxic masculinity and this male privilege and in return she realized that men I don't know if she said had it harder or men also have it hard. Then she, years later, ended up ending her own life. But in between that, she actually became a men's rights activist and was very bullied after that. She was called a traitor to women and feminists and all that stuff. So I've heard this story before. I didn't know she offed herself uh, assistance suicide. She must be in a, a Norwegian country because I, I think there's anywhere else. We all do, do assistance suicide. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I do agree with him that I think it's because she is a woman and even pretending to be a man, you're still a woman, so you still have all the emotions and all that stuff as a woman, even if you're pretending to be a man. But I think because I, he's right that men have to almost get used to rejection, correct me if I'm wrong, men who watch my videos. Um, and so it's kind of like when you're an athlete and you learn how to fall. Right? You get used to falling where it doesn't really traumatize you or knock you out of, off your game and you actually learn to fall a certain way when you don't hurt yourself. So it's like they, I guess men build up a sort of thick skin, some men, not all men, where it doesn't traumatize them the way it traumatized her. I think because women very rarely have to go through the type of back-to-back -back rejection that some men have to go through. Women experience rejection in, within our relationships, but not like on a daily basis throughout our lives trying to sort of hit on, you know, our romantic interest, right? 
And and if you notice, when women are rejected, they take it hella hard. Like, it's like World War Z. Like, even if a woman is rejected for sex, like, it's like the end of the world. She's out to destroy you now. You know, like, reputation destruction. Get all her females on you. Like, it's like women take rejection very, very hard because we don't, we're not used to it, right? Um, it's the same thing like when I was in here in India, in Rajasthan, I bumped into a fellow traveler and he's a male and we just started chatting. He was like, oh my God, like, how are you? How have you been? Has it been okay for you? And I was like, it's been fine. And he's like, I just couldn't imagine, you know, being a woman and having all these men like look at you and stare at you and come talk to you and you have to deal with it all the time. And I guess he had been traveling with females and India is really not that bad. But for him, I think seeing it firsthand, you know, on a daily basis women having to kind of like bat off guys and you know look scares and lures and catcalling and stuff like that which isn't the end of the world trust me like it's not the end of the world however because he saw it firsthand for the first time to him it seemed like a big deal but when he kind of said it back to me i was like oh it's it's fine that's just being a woman like that like for because we go through it all the time, it's like white noise. It's like, whatever, like, it's just part of being a woman. So I, I relate to what this guy is saying. It's like, for some men, not all men, rejection is kind of a part of being a guy and you learn to deal with it and not take it personal. For some men, not all men. And it, the same thing for women, not all women don't, you know, maybe that stuff does traumatize them. For me, it's like, I've been dealing with it to the, from the moment I got breast buds. You know, you just deal with it. And so I think it's because she wasn't a man, she still was acting as a man, but with female emotions, and that when she was getting rejected, it just, it hit her really hard to the point where it traumatized her because she wasn't used to it. And that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not saying being rejected is easy. I'm not saying that you should just take it on a chin and that's just how it is. But I'm saying because some guys are used to it and they've learned to not internalize it so much where it doesn't, you know, throw them into a, a spiral depression just because someone said they didn't want to talk to them a couple of times, right? Because, I mean, she was rejected a couple of times. It, it wasn't like she had to live 18 years of this, right? And she didn't even make it for two years. And her trauma mostly came from just being rejected. There's tons of other things that men go through that is uh, detrimental to the male population that she didn't even really experience. Like, this was just like the... The, the, the surface, you know, this is the first little point that men, like, men and young boys have to deal with um, from the moment they start dating, really. Anyway, um, I guess I've been talking long enough. We're going to get back into the video. But before you do, if you like to type of videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell to get the notification when I do upload. All of that really does help with the algorithm, guys. And if you want to support the channel any further, you can donate. My PayPal me link is in the description box below and also in the comment section. Of course, it helps, but you don't have to. You can just like, comment, and subscribe. Another great way to support the channel is either join my brand new membership program, different levels, different tiers, different perks. And if you like, you can super thanks. Other than that, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right, here we go. Man. But damn, wow. Or sounding like a jerk or whatever else. And what do you guys do? Nora says the brush off Barbara Jones gave Ned was typical. She was just sort of emblazoned with hostility. You know, just looked at you and you saw everything cross her face, which was, oh, God help me, not again. I'm trying to have a drink with a friend and I've got to deal with you. Barbara was trying to dispose of Ned before her friend returned from the bathroom. Anyway, we haven't seen each other in a while, so yeah. But Ned returned and told Barbara the truth about her gender. You're saying you gave us all the lines, like try to get rid of us. I, I see, and as a woman, I have such sympathy. I'm like, oh, I hate being this guy that you're trying to get rid of. You know? Talking to a woman, Barbara seemed more open and friendly. Her entire demeanor changed. Now I will say this: obviously, a lot of women are used to being harassed by men throughout their entire life. So obviously some women build up a defense when it comes to men. Yes, you can say you can understand that. It makes sense. But obviously even in dating, women still reinforce boundaries, which makes sense. But it's never thought of how difficult it is for the men. But then again, who cares? You know, it's a man. Just get on with it. Pull your socks up and get on with it. In the end, actually apologized for how she had treated Ned. So wow. Sorry for being bitchy. Uh, please. Does that kind of living in the skin of a man in the bar scene, in the dating scene, give you a different kind of respect for men? It gives me a, a certain definite sympathy. Um, and I don't mean that there's any disrespect, but it, it just makes me understand what's going on. Nora, as Ned, also went on about 30 dates with women, mostly arranging them on the Internet. Did you have any fun? 
Rarely. Rarely. Wow. It was how stark, how dark, how morbid that she never had fun on the dates. She never had fun. How often is our fun brought into question when it comes to dates? Never. Especially as men, we're the ones that arrange them. Now, as men, now, as men, you know, as men, we'd probably do something random. But if we're going to impress a woman, obviously, we do it like this, because obviously, we're trying to impress her or whatever. So we wouldn't do everything that we would find fun ourselves. But then again, as a man, you can probably just pick places that both of you would find fun. But whatever, whatever. Like, just do whatever you want, and if she's not that into it, then it's probably not gonna work out. Like, if your true does, if your true passions is something that you're trying to avoid on the first few dates because you think it's gonna turn her off, it's gonna eventually reveal itself. So you might as well let her know who you are right off the bat. So, like, if she likes it, she likes it, and if she doesn't, then it wasn't really meant for you unless you're just trying to bang. And the whole like, you know, women kind of giving men bitch face when they try to hit on them. You have to kind of understand it also from the side of the woman. Like, there's been plenty of times where I try to be nice when a guy approaches me and I smile and I say hello. But I always feel like when you're nice, it's like they take it as an invitation as an end. And it's not. It's just me being nice. And then you have to, like, deal with this, you know, hour-long conversation that you don't want to be in. And you're, like, you were just, you were busy doing something before and you kind of feel like if I would have just got them gave him the brush off in the beginning I would now be in this really weird situation I don't want to be in right and so it's like you know how like how men say women don't want to hear the truth I kind of feel like when it comes to rejection you know men don't want to hear the truth too because it's like there's been plenty of times where I've said no to a guy and I got called a bitch I got called a hoe a slut you a skank you think you all that you're not even pretty so it's kind of like I have a right to say no. I have a right to say, oh my God. <laughs> I have a right to be like, I want, I, I creating boundaries and you're not entitled to my space, my time, my energy, or my attention. You're not entitled to any of those things. So it's kind of like, it would be nicer if we can live in a world where if a guy hit on a girl and she simply smiles and goes, oh, I'm actually busy reading, and the guy just takes it and goes, okay, sorry, ma'am, have a good day. But a lot of females, especially when we're younger, that's not what we experience. We experience almost like this hostility of like, well, fuck you. And it's like, well, damn. Then instead of being nice or smiling, I'm just going to give you a bitch look because I don't even want to have to go through that interactions. Not all guys are like that, but unfortunately, a lot of guys have to kind of be punished for the previous men who came along. And I'm not saying that's okay, and I'm not saying that's right, but you have to kind of look at both sides. I I can't fully understand what men go through when it comes to being rejected. I have no idea what that feels like. I try to imagine it must not feel good to be rejected that many times if you are taking your shot, like if you are putting yourself out there. Because like getting rejected now and again, fuck, it really sucks. So I couldn't imagine having to go that over and over again. But just because you are a victim of that doesn't mean you're entitled to women's you know, time space or energy but i don't blame a guy for giving a shot it's just like you know if a girl kind of gives you the either verbal or 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 social clues of i'm not interested just take the clues because it's like it makes it rough for other guys because then we we get sick of it you know what i mean both sides okay like just <laughs> and to and, and bear with me here i actually saw a video where they talked about um women the evolution of the dating scene when it comes to women there was a time and a place where men weren't it wasn't socially acceptable for men to even approach women it wasn't even socially acceptable for men to come say hi to a woman that he didn't know because at the time marriage was women's security so it was it was literally it was literally life or death for us uh, when it comes to the idea of us being virgins or us being pure, right? And so if you were even caught by one town's person or one nosy neighbor talking to a guy that was not going to be your husband, that can literally ruin your fucking life forever. And so at, there was a time and a place, and I know we don't live there anymore, but it's supposed to be how we evolved as people where sometimes women get that knee jerk of like, 
we call it the ick of like, oh my God, get away from us because it's that evol that we evolve that way of like, we don't want to be seen with someone that we are not going to be with because we don't want that reputation that we just sleep around or we just talk to any old body. So it, we kind of evolve that way as well. But I think both genders and both sexes need to kind of understand and empathize and sympathize with either is going on. But I think the argument and the 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 frustration when it comes to men and it feels like no one cares about their side of the story that society and culture only caters to women's feelings and women's uh ups and downs what women have to go through but when it comes to what men have to go through it's like we don't care shut up no one cares about your men tears right and i think as a society and as both sexes we need to learn how to understand each other so we can come together and have healthy fucking ro heterosexual romantic relationships because if we're just on the feminist side or the real red pill men's side just hating each other that's not really conducive to building a healthy society anyway let's continue <laughs> He never had fun at all dating as a man. Interesting perspective. Wow. It's an Pretty ordeal. Unpleasant. Yeah. She says the pressure of Ned having to prove himself was grueling. Interesting. Nor was surprised that many women had no interest in a soft, vulnerable man. <laughs> She's seeing it herself firsthand. How that doesn't make sense. Oh, but it's sweet, isn't it? It's sweet. Pay attention. My prejudice was that the, the ideal man is a woman in a man's body. And I learned, no, that's really not. There are a lot, a lot of, of a lot of women. Oh my God, a lot of women think that nonsense. Proper bullshit. And it's like, no, that's dumb woman. It doesn't make sense. The, the ideal man is a woman in a man's body. And I learned, no, that's really not. There are a lot of women out there who really want a manly man. I agree with that. I think even when men don't, when, when women don't realize that's what they want, they want that at the end of the day. It doesn't mean they want, you have to be fucking Jason Momoa. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jason Momoa. Anyway, <laughs> but like nobody, no, most women, not all women, most women don't want feminine men. And if you want a man in a woman's body or a woman's in a man's body or something like that, then you're a lesbian. But like, are you into like, you know, manly women? But like, no, and I've seen women who've married or settled on very feminine and docile beta type of submissive men. And a lot of times they become very resentful towards their husbands because they, they get sick of wearing the pants. Like they get sick of being in charge and they just want like, can you please like pick up your slack and be the man and do you? But that that's what they, they were attracted to that at the first because feminism told them to be attracted to that. Right? We all remember that fucking, that article about the woman who actually talked about her own toxic masculinity because she wasn't sexually attracted to her husband in a dress. No, that is your biology screaming at you saying, no, this is not what you want. This is not how we evolved. And again, there are outliers and there are always outliers. Dr. Jody Peterson says they're outliers and they're not a tiny amount that this should just be scoffed at. Of course, there's outliers. But for the general public, your biology kind of leads you into what you're attracted to, you know, anyway. And unfortunately, not everybody fits in that thing. You know, we have beauty standards for a reason, but let's continue. Out there who really want a manly man. Ultimately, Ned told most of his dates that he was Nora. Many of the women reacted angrily, but usually just for a little while. Some women wanted to continue the relationship. They remained interested <laughs> in pursuing something further. You know, so whereas... Sexually? Yeah. And that was heterosexual women who... Heterosexual. That's what I'm saying. It's all up here because they said, well, we connected and, you know, there, there's something I really like you and I don't care. How many guys would do that? Nope. Pussy, pussy. I am a man. I need it. Not many unless he was kind of, you know, inclined that way already. As a man, I don't understand how women have a switch. They can go from liking women to liking men and back and forth. I don't understand how that works as a man. It's the difference between male and sex female sexuality right there. Nora says she's healed now and glad to be rid of Ned. But her views about men have changed forever. Men are suffering. They have different problems than women have, but they don't have it better. They need our sympathy, they need our love, and they need each other more than anything else. They need to be together. Do you think women understand what it's like to be a man? Not at all. No clue. Never. No idea. The irony is not lost on Nora that it took a trip into manhood to help her appreciate her own femininity. I'm so much closer to myself 
than I ever was, that I really like me. I really like being me, and I really like being a woman. Did you like being a woman before, Ned? I did, but I like it more now, because I think it's more of a privilege. But I like it more now, because I think it's more of a privilege. That is the end of that, a feminist pretending to be a man. I, I guess she did offer herself. I don't think it had anything to do with her being a man because she was living as a woman long after she decided to end her life. I'm pretty sure she had a lot of other mental health issues going on, especially if you are in a position where you are so convinced men have it so much better than you that you set off just to prove the entire male population wrong, that you're willing to live as a man for two years. Kind of tells me something was a little bit up there anyway um but she did become a men's rights activist so that's fine i would have to push back on the idea that she lived as a man like socially she presented herself as a man but you don't have all the biological makings of a man so i think it's a little unfair to say she lived as a man because i think it's a little disrespectful to men but i understand what they're trying to say she she socially lived as a, a man and she only did it for the dating scene that's really not being that's not the entirety of manhood even though i know like finding pussy and finding a woman <laughs> is a lot about a man. That's what I'm learning anyway from the red pill community that is all about women. Uh, I, I think it's sad that it, it, I don't think it should be that way. I think you should really just be you and focus on you and, and be concerned with you. Um, and if someone wants to share their life with you, great. I don't really, I don't really think that's what the only goal for men should be because I think it's harmful, but I guess it's just, that's how men evolve biologically anyway guys tell me what you think this video was longer than i thought it was going to be um if you're still there as i know some of my the men population was like no <laughs> like it just like got off right away but if you're still there tell me what you think of this video in the comment section below please like comment and subscribe hit that button for notifications when i do upload all that really does help with the algorithm guys and if you'd like to support this channel any further you can donate my paypal me link is in the description box below and also in the comment section of course this helps but you don't have to you can just like comment and subscribe another great way to support this channel is either join my brand new membership program different levels different tiers different perks or you can visit my brand new merch shop links down below it links to all of the alternative platforms i'm on my socials are including my Twitter, other ways to support me and other ways to contact me for business is always in the links down below. And if you like, you can super thanks. I also have a second travel vlog channel. I travel as a lifestyle. I live abroad. If you'd like to know where I am in the world, you can go in the description box below and also in the comment section. Hit the link. Go subscribe to my travel vlog channel and or follow me on my travel Instagram. My stories is usually this most of the date. I have all my other YouTube channels. Links down below. And you guys have an amazing day.